Hi, Stouffville. It's Charlene, and I'm back with Counselor Bannon here at Whistle Radio 102.7 FM in beautiful downtown Stouffville. And Counselor Bannon is describing to us what his plans are for economic development for Stouffville should he win the election as mayor. On October the 28th, the uh, people of Stouffville are going to hand a $300 million budget wow. to a mayor and council. Yep. For the next four years. That's $300 million. And you're going to hand the responsibility of running this administration to a new mayor. And that mayor is going to be your representative over at the region. And he's going to be your representative when dealing with the province and the federal government. This is a very important election. The most important election we have ever had in this town. I believe it. It's very important. Our economic development area that we have just uh, started discussing is so important to me, so important that I can reduce taxes, reduce the tax burden for residential taxes in this town, uh, increased industrial growth, attract new business to this town, not in the downtown sector, but out in the corridor where businesses want to be. They need the transportation route. We've got the 404 corridor. We've got the 407 corridor. We're going to have expansion north on the 404. And the parking is available out there, if I don't mind saying to you. All of the parking is available out there. The land is out there. The land is owned by developers For industries. For For industries. And it's going to be industrial growth out there. We've got to increase our industrial and commercial growth. In town, we've got to support our small business. Nobody supports small business more than I do. As... As you know, know, my wife uh, is a, has yes. a small business in town as well. Yes. And you know what? We work very hard at keeping that business alive. And, and for me, it's, it's a matter of reaching out to the uh, small business owners in town as the mayor and working together and supporting their efforts, advertising, promoting, and marketing small business in this town. Using the mayor's um, position, mm-hmm. the mayor's position, and and those of uh, the councillors in town mm-hmm. who will be joining me, uh, visiting, promoting, and marketing small business in town on a regular basis. Each month, again, I'm saying to you, we will be featuring a business, visiting a business, and offering the opportunity for people to come down and speak with me and speak with members of council, discuss issues that are important to you. And that's and the off weeks between you and I when we have our regular conversations, That's our regular correct. meetings here That's on right. radio. That's right, absolutely. And, and we'll be promoting this business to yes. make sure that we can reduce the tax burden so that we can, we can clean up the town, we can provide services in the downtown area that people want and people need. This town is still growing. Yes. People love this town. They yes. love what we're doing. They love what they see that we're doing. We as a council have been together for 11 years now, yes. the majority of us. And and people are very happy with what they've seen. We're down to a small bucket list now of things that we have to do, and it's basically infrastructure. We have to we have to we have to fix roads. We have to yes. rebuild sidewalks and curbs, mm-hmm. and we have to keep building leisure services facilities and providing programs for families for the young families in this town. But we've also got to provide transit for them to get to these these programs yes. and these facilities. We need connectivity in this town. These young families want to come out of their homes. They want to be part of this, what what I'm, what I am advertising and promoting to people, the family life in Stouffville. I will keep this town small family life. As you're aware, I've been running the Winter Carnival now for 11 years. Great job, a great job you've done, and it draws 2,000 people regularly. I can hardly imagine that up in Cedar Beach. It's incredible. What a great opportunity mm-hmm. for families to get together mm-hmm. for four or five hours a day. The family fireworks and yes. movie night up in Ballantry draws yes. four to 5,000 people. Incredible. It's incredible. Another five or six hours for families spending time together. The Ballantry Fall Fair, which is coming up in September, another three to 4,000 people who come out and they just enjoy uh, four or five hours together. It's free. People just come out and spend time together, spend family time together. And as I, again, what I'm, the feedback I'm getting at the doors, people are very happy with these events and they want to see more of these. And I will be bringing more of these events to this town as the mayor. As a long-term resident here and as a person who had my parents, my parents were at Musselman Lake before I was, and one of the big complaints for all those years was exactly what you're addressing, which is there's nothing for the young kids to do. 
There's nothing for the children, and there's nothing for the kids as they become teenagers. And what these different programs are doing is providing a place for the families to focus their family activities locally. So you don't have to drive to Toronto to get a beautiful display of fireworks down at Ashbridges. You don't have to go someplace else to get a winter carnival, etc. And that is really uh, also obviously the vendors who come to those events, the various various small businesses in Stouffville participate. I know that Tim Hortons is a very, very strong um, support of the spring cleanup that we do at Musselman Lake, and that is the Tim Hortons just here in Stouffville. And, and so there becomes bigger and bigger, more and more of a link between what's happening in the business community as well as what's happening with the families. And, and you know what's important here, too, Charlene, is the fact that um, I, I didn't decide to run for mayor and then start up a community event. Exactly. Or I didn't decide to run for mayor and join a local uh, community group uh, to promote myself as a member of the community. Right. I sit back and and I I would suggest to you that anybody who is running for mayor should have made a full-time commitment to this community by now, by this time in their life. If they think they want to run this town as the mayor, they should be committed to running community events, to being part of the social programming and family programming in this town. Absolutely. And we should be seeing that in all of the candidates who are running for mayor and council. Well, quite frankly, I believe you've raised the bar in in that particular direction because you have created those experiences over the past 11 years. And as everyone knows now, I am a resident of your ward, and that's why I am promoting you so fully on this program, because I have seen what you have actually done. I'm also aware, and we must be realistic, that not everybody agrees with everything that gets done by anybody at any given time of the day. However, in terms of the overview and what you've actually accomplished, with these various festivities and the various focus that you've had to bring together community, community. It isn't just family. It's family within community. And that means that we would be bucking the trend that is now being recognized in the U.S. where people don't know the names of their neighbors. That's frightening. It's alienating. As a psychotherapist, I can tell you that our hearts get hurt if we don't know people, if we don't have a good feeling about the people around us, even the eccentrics within us. Well, we won't go down that road because I'm one of them. But anyway, the point is we have to have connection to the people in our community. We have to be connected to them, and it helps on all levels. And when we're talking about community... I talk about families in the community. I don't talk about seniors and I don't talk about kids because they're part of the family and they're part of the community. And, and what, again, come election time, you're going to hear the same thing from the same candidates over and over again. I'm going to look after seniors and I'm going to look after kids. Well, what have you been doing for the last 20 years? This is it. You know, if you haven't done it now, Mm -hmm. can we expect you to do it tomorrow? Especially with a $300 million budget to run. That's a huge commitment. And I can't imagine anyone not understanding that in my eyes anyway, that's going to be a 16 hour day. It's going to be a long day, but it's a normal day for me. I understand that too. And as I've said before, and I'll say it again, quite frankly, I've had the opportunity to try to get a hold of you at 7.30 or 8 o'clock in the morning, and you're just coming out of a meeting. And then again, at seven or eight at night, you may be just driving home, but you have another couple of hours at home for phone calls and all the rest of it. So I know that you work around the clock and you work around the clock because this is your passion. This is what you do that makes you come alive in the way that I love to see people coming alive. I interview writers and I interview musicians and I hang out with artists in part because when the passion is there, it's a juice. It's a vitality anyone can feel. And for you, it's in politics. It's in doing these things for the community. It's in building the community. It's in your eyes. It's in your body language. It's everything about you. That dedication, that passion, and that commitment are there. And your track record proves it. Having developed all of these activities for the community, having developed a parkland, for crying out loud, at Musselman Lake, who would have thought seven years ago, you are the single-handed person who created that. You went to all the parties involved and just kept working, talking to each one, trying to get everybody together, keeping everybody involved, keeping everybody informed. You did that, and that's only one activity that you've created for our community. I can't wait for you to be able to be in the situation for Stouffville, because I know you work twice as hard to make sure that our community is strong and vibrant. As you mentioned before, 
we are the smallest taker at the table in the region. And that means we need somebody who knows the community, knows how to build a community, and you're the man for the job. You're going to be sitting at a table with the mayor of Markham, the mayor of Vaughan, Richmond Hill, Newmarket, Aurora, King. These are big areas with a lot of emo- uh, economic clout. That's right. And they control. They control that regional board. Yeah. And, and and you have to think that uh, on day two, you're going to be sitting over at the region with these people, and you're going to be looking these people in the eye, and you have to know these people. You have to know how they act and, and, and how to relate with these people. Have yeah. some confidence and be proud of what you do. I know all these people. I've been working with these people now for 11, 12 years. You've been on the regional board as well, have you not? So you sit back and the time that I've spent with these mayors, the time that I've spent with these regional councillors, the time that I've spent with the MPP, the time that I've spent with the MP, these are important times in our lives, in the life of Stouffville, to have these long-standing, established relationships with these people who are going to share in the growth of this town. And because it's the growth of the region. So you have covered to some degree the economic development, and I'm just absolutely delighted with the idea that people like the love of Joe or people like Charlotte Caves, Cheek Thrills and and the girls, any of the small businesses on Stouffville are going to be given a spotlight for a month in which everybody can flock to that particular location, know they're going to get a little bit of a treat, they're going to be able to hear more about why this is important, what's going on, and, and also to see whatever kind of creativity the owners of the businesses can come up with to display who they are to us. That not only is that important, but uh, as as you've seen with the uh, the improvements in the downtown area, we talked about accessibility issues at, yes. our, at our last meeting. And if you've seen the dental office, if you've seen the ramp that yes. they put in there, that's a that's a thirty thousand dollar ramp. Yes, and and we've provided a grant for that half half of that grant. And uh, so we we provided that for them. We provided a grant for their their front door as well. So these are the kind of initiatives that we have to do downtown to make sure that people want to invest in our downtown area. Yes. Support them. Provide them with interest-free money and support them in their growth patterns. Um, it will pay off for us, as it is with, with the um, the dental office and some of the other offices and businesses downtown that are they're improving their friends. The the paint contest that we had was Benjamin Moore contest. What it, what it did for our downtown area, the revitalization yes. of our downtown area now. There are actually businesses that, that did not call us back and want to participate in that program that's fine yes that's fine we can move on from that but you know what i'm going to be there for all the business owners in this town and i'm going to invest in this town this the next administration of this town is going to invest in small business in this town great news all of the points are being all the boxes are being ticked off here we've got the economic development through increasing industrial uh, commitment to our area and having them pay the share of the taxes we've got it that means a decrease to the individuals we've got the idea of promoting extensively with your vision it's an actual vision that you have and we know that because of your past you will fulfill that vision that is what will happen Councillor bannon it's been a pleasure as always i look forward to one more it's been gone so quickly it'll be our last one but it will be great we'll have another talk with you next month and thank you so much for being here charlene thank you so much for taking the time to uh, spend this time with me <laughs> okay stoville that's it for today's program Thanks to Gary Burke for all his wonderful tech wizardry and to Joe Burton for the wonderful intro and extra music. I'm very grateful for the opportunity, Stouffville, to be able to do this uh, through Whistle Radio 102.7 FM. It's a great town we live in. Give a little prayer of gratitude for everything and be kind to each other. Bye for now. Bye.